Hi, everyone. Um, I thought about doing something really fun today, which is a follow-up to my almost like eight months old video, which was here's how to design using AI, right? And if you remember, there was sort of like a, a response to my now infamous Figma tweet um, to show people, you know, how I use AI into uh, my process. So now, uh, of course, five months after we launched Magic Path, the product is going through lots of iteration, lots of improvement. And so I thought, you know what? It would be fun to redo this video, but now, of course, using my product instead of the Aki flows that I was using at the time. And so what we're going to do today, we are going to recreate, uh, we're going to create an app where I can just like prompt any images and then it will show into a gallery. Like I always want like a quick web app that I could use on my phone to, yeah, just basically, you know, generate images using the GPT-1 image model from OpenAI. Maybe I'll also use like the smaller one to, you know, just make it faster. But uh, the idea is like, you know, we'll, we'll go through, you know, how to construct the different components and then build it together. And first of all, focus on the front end and then we'll focus on the actual interaction because that's how I like to work. So here I have a new uh, Magic Path uh, project. And of course I could just, you know, ask something here, of course, but what I like to do is just like double click anywhere and opens up a new, opens up a new frame. So um, as I said before, in, the way I imagine this app to be is gonna have a prompt input and then a gallery. And when I create an image, it's just gonna be added into that gallery. So of course here I could say, and I say, hey, you know, create an input prompt, yada, yada, yada. But the best way is actually honestly just like start from a screenshot, right? So what I'm gonna do here is like, I, I really like this, right? And so I'm gonna basically just pop into this and I'm gonna say, make this. Now, the cool thing about Magic Path is that we also have the best image to code implementation, but also we have the best editor basically of every Vibe coding tool. So once I get that design, I will actually be able to just very quickly iterate uh, if it's something that I don't like, right? Because there, for example, there's a few things that I don't need, like the, the vocal instruction and a bunch of the thinking, like a bunch of the stuff, because we're using an image model, so we won't need that. Um, we also worked a lot on improving the main flow. Uh, you will see it's like much faster now, like things basically builds constantly. Like this is, this is not like the other sort of like AI application when things just doesn't build. Uh, like here, like things build all the time, which is like really awesome. And so let's see. All right, so <clears throat> we have our prompt here. You can see like it basically perfectly created the image. But as I say, there's a few things I don't need here. So. I do not need this, right? And I definitely don't need the thinking. So I'm just gonna like remove that as well. And then here, uh, let's see if I should just remove this as well. Yes, because it was a different section. And then this is a cool thing about Magic Path. So you can see here, things are not aligned. I can actually, boom, I can align it. How cool is that? <clears throat> I can also just align even this div more into the flex by doing this. So now it's like things are a little more online. <clears throat> I might leave the plus. Uh, I can also like, change this icon to whatever I want, but for now I'm just gonna save this edit. And in the meantime, they get saved, which is a, it's, it's pretty quickly because you know we just basically edited the, the look. There's no AI involved. So when you do edit it manually, <clears throat> there's no AI involved. So you can just like basically use whatever you want. <clears throat> but one thing I wanna show you is like you don't only edit via the chat, but you can also use precise edits. So because I didn't make an icon for this uh, thing first, I'm just gonna use the precise edit to say, change it to uh, arrow up icon. And so now it will basically use, you know, the SVG that uh, it's the closest to my request. <clears throat> and you can see that like this basically, because it also there's like less AI uh, flow involved here because we are precisely in editing a certain specific part of, of the component, it would just like basically just apply that much quicker because it, it's essentially just an apply edit, if that makes sense. <clears throat> so you can see it already goes into building. But it would have been much faster if I just upload an SVG, <laughs> uh, which you can do. I just didn't have the one. Okay, cool, awesome. I love this now. So the other thing I need, I need a view with grid images, right? So I'm gonna say, make a iOS view for a web app to display a series of images, a square, 
in a grid, each, uh, each row <clears throat> will display the images, use a black background. And these images will receive the output of an image gen model. So it's gonna do that. In the meantime, this gets created. We are gonna go and look at the OpenAI preferences. So basically the only thing we need is the create image reference, right? Because that's what, that's what we need. Um, and we actually need curl. And the reason why we need the curl is because that will allow us to send requests directly from the front end. Magic Path only works on front end. It's a decision that I made because I think designers should only work on, focus on the front end, right? This is a very kind of like high intensity flow that I'm doing here. I'm using an API and like all that kind of stuff. But, you know, like because of that, you know, you, you, of course you can't use Python because you use React and Node, you use Node when you actually have a backend, right? But as I said before, we only wanted to focus on the main experience. So, but that's the API that we're gonna use. But first I wanna get my front end in, in a good place, if that makes sense. Um, and so, okay, this is building right now. Cool, okay, so it shows us this grid of generated images. Now, one thing I can do, for instance, I can say, well, you know, like, um, I can ask, you know, first of all, I can ask, like, I don't need pre-filled image. So I say, I don't need pre-filled in images, just display an empty state uh, for now, but of course, support the ingestion <clears throat> of new images. So I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> so it's gonna remove the mock image you created. It. And by the way, you can see here I recreated this, this prompt. We also have libraries. So for example, one of the libraries we support is actually this um, AI app library. So we have like prompt inputs here. We had, you know, chat conversation messages. But I just wanted to show you like how to recreate this from scratch, which I think it's like cooler. But we can also just like, you know, I could have just started and say like, I, I have already had this prompt. I could have edited that <clears throat> and then ask the AI to integrate that basically. But for now, for the sake of this demo, I just wanted to show you the, um, how that thing worked basically. Okay, so now we have our little thing here where you know there's like no image of course generated yet. And uh, okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say combine, bam, and bam. So these two components. This is the beauty of Magic Pop. You know, now that I have this thing, I can just like combine it together. And of course, I could also just ask everything at once, but I kind of want to show you, you know, this flow because this is a blueprint of once you want to work with a little more precision and so on, so that the images images created uh, via prompt appear in the grid. Um, Make sure the design of the element stays the same while changing the functionality. And by the way, you don't have to say this. I'm just show you for the sake of this demo to show you basically what's happening behind the back. So you know you're taking these designs and it's gonna combine them together into something new um, without uh, altering like the, your look, right? Because for example, let's say if I wanted this to be like a different color, right? And I was like, okay, I want this to be red or whatever, right? So you could have done that. But for the case of this, for, the, for this case, we're keeping stuff as they get generated because I was like pretty happy with the way this looked. Uh, maybe I just like, I'm gonna increase the text size a little bit, but um, I can also do it once is the, the main view is sort of like generated. Okay, so as you can see, combine the different uh, prompt. I'm gonna use like a, a mobile app here. How cool is that by the way? Like we just combine these two, right? Okay, so now we have all the, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna change this so that it says, uh, like instead of say describe images, it should say ask for uh, new images, new image. So it's like a little more tight there. And then I'm also gonna make sure this is flex, it's centered. Um, and I think this is also need to be flex center. Okay. So this is the kind of stuff that it's like, you can't do with other tools, right? Cause it's like, like AI is always going to like 
slightly change something or even because, you know, there's always going to be something that is not the way you want it. But here you basically get so much control, which is, which is really. So now we're going to use our API key, right? So API instruction. So basically all we need is this, right, which is the generation image. And so now what we're going to do, we're going to go here and we're going to say uh, using the OpenAI API for the GPT image model, connect this APIs so that when I generated, generate, ge <laughs> generate an image, um, it displays in the grid using our input prompt. Um, and so that's the instruction basically. And then I'm going to say for the API key, add a setting panel where I can add my API key. Okay. All right, so now we have our little setting icon here. It's awesome. I'm gonna go and grab my um, API key, so it might feel like the video interrupts for a second. All right, I'm back here. My API key is there, saved. Moment of true. Uh, a cat with a at. Let's go. Okay, seems like it's working. Amazing, amazing, amazing. It's definitely working. I might also like use the uh, other model, which I think it's called the GPT image. My, what is it called? Um, is it, there's a new model now in the, in the API, which should be like much. So let's see if this is done. It's still going. Uh, image generation. So you have GPT-1 image. I, I swear I saw there was like a, a mini model as well. Um, they have it in the they have it in the playground let me just like go there okay oh okay GBD1 image mini okay so oh there we go here's the <laughs> here's the cavity oh that's so cute and you can also download the image of course and now I'm gonna ask for something else um and actually, what I'm going to ask is to, in the settings, add a drop down, add a drop down to choose between the model we're using now, we're using, can spell <laughs> using now, and this. Oh, that's my API key. I'm having this issue with the. Uh, I'm having this issue with uh, my copy for some reason. Okay, GPD image one, GPD image one, meaning. Okay, let's see. All right, let's see. Okay, so in the setting, I have standard and meaning. Okay, let's see if this works as well. So I'm going to ask uh, for an uh, image of a hotter with a hat right now. Let's see. Oh, I think we might. Uh, maybe, you know what? Maybe they don't support that in the API because it's strange they didn't use it as an API reference. So maybe it's only in the playground. So what I'm actually going to do I'm going to go back to my older version. So that's also the cool thing about Magic Puff. You can always go back to all the variation, right? But now, now that I have this, well, for example, you know, I know this is like, for me, it's like a little bit too big of a font, right? So what if I want this to be 14, right? Um, and this one, so I'm okay with that. And this whole section, actually, let me see. I want to flex and center it. So like, see how cool is that? And then here... For this particular prompt, I actually wanted this to be 13. Because you have, you have to imagine, this is going to go on uh, a phone, right? This is not going to go into, um, like, a, it's not, I mean, it is a web app, but I'm going to say, like, I'm going to use it on, for my phone. So it's cool to 
kind of just you know have sizes that match like you know fonts usage and stuff um this icon it's also like pretty big but also so this is the other thing i can do right so now i can flex here right i maybe i kind of want this I don't, I don't need the indication now another thing we can do here is that we didn't we didn't create this with a with a design system but if we did when we go here and we try a different team we will actually see the thing change in real time but because we didn't use a design system to start of course like now we can preview but i could potentially say now what thing i can do i can say you know rewrite the whole app using the design system but for the sake of this this presentation i'm not going to do it but one thing i want to show you is actually this so let's say that now i'm very happy with this component right which clearly works and this other component i can actually create a library now from here so i can say okay add to a library and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this, uh, you know, video demo. I can just do a library. I'm also gonna add this one to the video demo library. So now when I go here, there's video demo and I can just like drag and drop all those components. How cool is that? So very quickly, if I wanna reuse this component for something else, I can just use it. So I don't have to like redesign something from scratch, right? Like you always do when, when you work with AI. But now the other cool thing too, it's like, this is an app that I can just like share, right? I can just share this with everybody. They can just, you know, pop the API key here, select, uh, of course we remove the, the model selection because like, I think the, the mini is not supported in the API, maybe it's only supported in the playground. And, uh, but what's cool about it is it's like, like now, you know, it's like, let's say what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna create a few images because I wanna show, I wanna see what is the actual grid when you create a few image. So I might speed up this part of the video. So I'm gonna do a hotter. <laughs> this one is so funny. This, this model is amazing. Like this looks so real, like what? It's incredible. Um, I'm curious to see the Capri photo. That's going to be beautiful. The reason why, by the way, you don't see images when you go here, because this is two different instances of that uh, local storage, right? So when you go here, this is a different local storage. If I, if I actually um, create the image there, it, they, will, they will show up there, basically. Because it's just more like a security reason. Like You don't want to have like a persistent local storage across multiple views, you know? Oh, wow, it's just beautiful. I like how the, the little effect that he put above the image description. It's like the little gradient. It's like really cool. So one thing I noticed is basically what I was thinking, which is now because we flex to the center, it's actually, um, yeah, it's basically not centering those images anymore, uh, which is why I think it's, sorry, not centering, it's like from the top, which I think it's better for that purpose. I think it's better to bring that one back here so that then, you know, once you generate images, it's it's right there and so of course you know this is like sort of like uh uh we saw you know how to use api most of the time you know you probably won't do that because it's like it's, it's just a flow that you don't get to use all the time so yeah so basically you know what we did we created this component we used this component we saw how you can connect an api and basically in the span of like, you know, 15 minutes, we had a, a running app that we can share and just, you know, have people try it out. I think like that's the really cool thing because now like here, it's like I can just, I can, you know, basically just change whatever I want here, right? I can like use a different design system. I can like, you know, uh, change the, change like some of the, 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 the tech, like the font. So actually I didn't even show you. So you can basically use any Google font you want we're actually about, we're in the process of also, like you can search of course for any also Google font you want. Um, we are in the process of also being able to add your own font, which is very excited about. Um, and of course, like you can also share the entire project. I could have also generated variances of this. So I can say like, you know, make, I don't know, three, two different variants and I can say, I feel lucky. So they just let decide, the AI decide and stuff like that. Yeah, so thanks so much.